A selection from the life and writings of William Bailey. Come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? John 4.29 In the eternal light and life of God, with which I and all mankind are enlightened in measure, do I now stand and rejoice over the world and all its glory and enmity, over the beast and false prophet, both within and without, having received power from the Father of life by walking in the way of his judgments, after which my soul had long breathed and thirsted, even from a child, though then I knew not what my soul panted for, but now I know that the mysteries of God's everlasting kingdom are revealed to the babes that fear him, but to others they are hidden in parables. When I was about ten years old, I remember that sometimes I desired to go and sit alone quiet in some deserted place where I might bewail myself and weep in secret, even until my heart was broken, though I did not know why. I began to pray in fear to God with tears, and though I knew not who or where he was and had very little to say, yet something cried out in me and breathed towards God, confidently believing that God heard me wherever he was and would pity me and save me, for which thanks did arise unto him. I did not then know that there was a seed in me which was and is beloved of God, which is contrary to the course of this world, to which the blessings and promises belong, and which did arise at times in the quiet of my mind to break down all that the serpent and my own will had wrought in my heart that was contrary to God, that thereby I might enjoy peace in the everlasting covenant of light. For at any time when I had done or spoken something which was contrary to God, I was soon checked for it, judged and condemned, and put in fear by his witness in my conscience, which beheld all my ways and words, though ever so secret. This is the same light which Job spoke of, which made me inherit the iniquities of my youth, watch closely all my paths, and set a limit for the soles of my feet. Job 8.27 and in this light I can see all that ever I have done, and I do remember the first oath that ever I swore, being provoked by another lad, and how I was smitten with trembling and scarcely able to stand upon my feet because of the witness of God in my conscience, though I knew not then what it was, and would have liked to have fled away from it, being put in such horrible fear and condemned by it when I had done any evil. So it is, as David says, that there is no place where the worker of iniquity may hide himself from the dreadful presence of God. So, when about fifteen years old, I went among the soldiers, it being the time of war, not heeding the true guide, the light and spirit of God, which often strived with me to lead me in meekness and in fear, and away from all strife and fighting, which comes from the lusts that war against the soul. I then entered and became one among them, both in garrison and army, where, for a time, I was kept and preserved out of much wickedness by the fear of God in me, though I knew not then where he was, nor for a long time after. Yet by his secret hand of power, unexpected and undeserved, I was preserved when many were slain on my right hand and on my left. Glory and praises to his power forever and ever. But when about seventeen years old, I was under the command of one Major General Edward Massey, where I found many wicked and ungodly men, and some among them who had turned from Colonel Goring's army. Through this company, the honest seed in me was betrayed, and even murdered, and I began to be hardened from the fear of the Lord. For I was but a youth, and of a bashful countenance naturally, and was often checked in my conscience for any evil, and felt condemnation for it quickly. But now, among this crew, I could swear and boast and sometimes drink till I was drunk and grew in wickedness until I even took delight in swearing and drunkenness. Yet oftentimes, when I had gone away from my company and was alone and quiet, fear and dread from the witness of God in me would seize upon me in great and horrible terror. And in the night and dreams, I was often terrified and tormented with fearful sights and visions of hell and devils, death and damnation, which indeed in that state would have been my just portion. And so, in the cool of the day, I heard the voice of God and was afraid, 
like Adam in the transgression. And though I would have gladly hidden my sin, as Adam sought to do, yet the Lord did search it out. And now I know, as Job said, that God speaks unto man once, yes, twice, yet man perceives it not, in a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men, and slumbering upon the bed, that he may withdraw man from his purpose, and hide pride from him. Job 23.14 In this company I continued near two years, until all was disbanded, about which time I was so smitten by God's witness, the light of Christ in my conscience, that I began to leave off my swearing and lewdness. My profane company became even loathsome and burdensome unto me, and I never swore an oath from that time to this day, which was about ten years ago. So, at length, I became a little zealous to hear the priests, and began to look into the scriptures and talk much of them, as many profane ones do now, in order to make a covering for themselves. At that time, I thought I must be guided by the priests, who had learning and a knowledge of the languages, which they called the original, not knowing then that their original began at Babel, where God confounded the languages, and that the people before this were of one language in the beginning. So their original is from Babel, which is confusion, and they remain there still, together with all their followers, who will also partake of their plagues, if they do not come forth to the light of Jesus Christ, which is the true original. For his light was before Babel, and before the priests, or Latin, Greek, and Hebrew, which Pilate set over Christ, the true prophet, who all must hear. His name is called the Word of God, which word was in the beginning. But the poor, ignorant, and blind, who have gone out from the light which enlightens every man, these insist, with the priests, that the Greek and Hebrew are the original, and that the scriptures cannot be understood without them, not considering that they who had Latin, Greek, and Hebrew crucified the Son of God, who was in the beginning glorified with the Father before the world began, and who is the true original by whom the world was made. And to the Greeks his cross was foolishness, and to the Jews it was a stumbling block. And the Greeks had Greek, and the Jews had Hebrew, as well as the priests and Pilate, but they knew not the Son of God, the original but set their Latin, Greek, and Hebrew on top of him when they had crucified him. So for a season I traded with these merchants of Babylon, receiving and buying their wares, hoping it was good and durable riches that I had received from them, seeing it was so highly prized. For the people would cry out that only the priests had the original and could give the meaning of the scriptures, and none else. And so the beast upheld or carried the great harlot, and all the world marveled at them, as I also did then. But at length, something in me began to be more and more awakened, and hungered after true bread. Yet I thought I should still be fed at their table, and I was, until I was near starved with the husks that the swine did eat. For there was a stirring word that I felt in me, saying, Give me food, or else I perish. And I went to hear them, even with tears many times because of the hunger that I felt, until I perceived that they did not speak the word of life from the mouth of the Lord, the true bread that came down from heaven, but had studied and patched up something from the scriptures, mixing their own meanings and Babylonish wisdom with the old serpent's subtlety, and bidding us to sit down and hear the word of God. And so we looked for light, but behold... We were fed with darkness and dust, and that seed in me, to which the Lord God proclaimed joy and liberty, was made sad by them, as it was by the deceivers and false prophets in ages past. And this I can truly say, and do testify in the Lord, that when a true hunger and thirst did arise in me after the living God, it was often hurt, darkened, and spoiled by the earthly wisdom, philosophy, and vain deceit which came out of the priests' mouths. Such fleshly knowledge beguiled me of my reward, drawing my mind out from the pure measure of God's gift within, insomuch that the simple, honest, and meek seed which stirred in me was weary to hear them any longer. 
and from no other ground did I at first deny these teachers, but only as I felt the gift of God within me uncovering and witnessing against them as being those who could never profit the people at all, being outside of his counsel and not able to turn any from the evil of their ways, but rather strengthening the hands of the wicked and making the righteous sad. This is their work, and by their fruits it is made manifest, whose reward shall be accordingly. So, in those days my soul was awakened by the witness of God in my heart, whereby I felt the burden of sin, and I was often afraid of death and misery without end, but knew not how to get out from under the power of sin and death, nor to escape the wrath to come, being ignorant of him that saves from it, which is Christ, the power of God, who enlightens every man that comes into the world and condemns sin in the flesh. Romans 8.3 but now I see that people perish for lack of knowledge, and that the leaders of the people cause them to err, and they that are led of them are destroyed. Isaiah 9.16 For nothing will help or satisfy the longing immortal soul, but the eternal, true bread of life, the power of God, which he gives to as many as receive him, which power condemns for sin and destroys the works of the devil, who has the power of death. For the sting of death is sin. 1 Corinthians 15.56 So Christ delivers men from that which is the ground of their bondage and the fear of death. All who believe in him, who is the resurrection and the life, over whom the second death has no power. Glory to the Lord forever and ever. So then, having in measure begun to leave the priests, I kept at home, not desiring for a season to go and hear any, but rather to keep to myself and remain quiet alone. This was a great cross to my parents, wife, and relations, and also to something in me and to my companions and acquaintances who loved me with that love which quickly turned to hatred. So I found it hard to break the customs that I had lived in and to live in a way contrary to all my neighbors and acquaintances and to lose the love of them all as I saw I would if I followed that light which let me see the priests and the vanity of the world. I found that the scriptures speak not in vain. Can the Ethiopian change his skin or the leopard its spots? Then may you also do good, who are accustomed to do evil. Jeremiah 13.23 Hear this, you careless ones, who live in the vanity of your minds, contending for your customs, vanities, traditions, and fashions of a world that lies in wickedness, and for the fleshly lusts which wage war against your own souls. All this will become your plague in the day of your visitation, and that in which you have most delighted will become the greatest torment to you. Then you shall know that you were warned in your lifetime." But in the midst of these my trials and temptations, within and without, a word was very near me, even in my heart, though I then knew not what it was that said, Seek first the kingdom of God, and mind eternal life. And I knew not where to seek it or to find it. But the deep consideration of this did much strengthen me towards God, and sometimes even breathings and cries would ascend up from the prisoner of hope within me, and my heart was at times broken and melted by the power of the word of life, which I felt there hammering against my hardness and rending the veil that separated me from peace with God. But still I did not yet know Christ within the hope of glory, who enlightens every man that comes into the world, whose name is called the word of God, the male in the flock, which opens the womb holy unto the Lord. Luke 2.23 the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world, which lies in wickedness, the first and the last, the Holy One in the midst, whom my soul did love, but who had been pierced, wounded, and as it were, slain in me, like the seed that suffered in Sodom and Egypt, though he is Lord of lords and King of kings. So I began to heed and to love that light in me, which discovered sin and vanity, and made manifest the course of the whole world. And I took it to be my companion, or my kinswoman, as Solomon speaks of wisdom, Proverbs 7, 4, not knowing it to be the light of Christ, the wisdom and power of God, in my conscience, in those days of ignorance. But by it, 
I often saw my own folly, and that the whole world was out of its proper course, or the way of peace, in confusion and abomination, without the fear of God before their eyes, in pride, envying one another, and covetousness, and unrestraint, dissimulation, and falsehood, everyone seeking his own ends and gain, from the judge to the priest, and likewise their followers, not a wise man found among them that feared the Lord and departed from evil. This I saw, and was sometimes even grieved at the consideration of it, wishing in my heart that I had power to have helped it, feeling much desire for unity and peace, for meekness and quietness, love and justice among men, that they might live as children of one Father, saying in my mind, Did we not all come from Adam? And did we not all have one father and mother in the beginning? Why then should one envy another, and be high, proud, and stubborn against another, and murder each other about a little piece of earth, or a pursuit of vain glory that will wither? And why should man hate, and strive, and be angry about religion, and their judgments and opinions, and even fight one another about these things? When I considered these things in my mind, I desired in my heart that God would remedy all of this, and at last put an end to it, for I even felt the whole creation groaning in bondage under these oppressions at that time. Yet I did not know that it was the light of Christ in me, which sometimes checked me for sin and evil, that made known unto me these things, and opened my understanding, that I might know and understand those things that belong to my everlasting peace. So that now I can boldly say, People are destroyed for their lack of knowledge. Hosea 4 6. And that straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leads to life, and few are they who find it. Matthew 7 14. And that the mysteries of the kingdom are hidden from the wise and prudent of the world, but revealed unto babes. Matthew 11 25. And to such as can become fools for Christ's sake who is the light of the world, and the wisdom and power of God. Glory to him forever in the highest, who has brought me out of the darkness into his marvelous light, where I behold his likeness. Now, in these days, when I had even resolved never again to hear the priests, or to be a follower of them any more, yet being out of my outward employment, and for fear of losing all, through the persuasions of the serpent within, and of others without, I went to hear them again, lest I should have angered those who had an intention to employ me and prefer me. But for this I was terribly judged and condemned by God's witness within me, which before had let me see the deceit of the priests and the vanity and error of their worship and ways, contrary to Christ and his apostles and their doctrine. So in the process of time I took two small voyages into France, where, having time on my hands, the serpent led my mind out wholly to delight in the art of arithmetic, and in the study and practice of navigation, which I saw I might in a short time attain, being well acquainted with numbers, which is the ground of many arts. These pursuits took me up into an exceeding high mountain, showing glorious promises of the preferment, riches, and love of the world, and the respect of men, which tickled the nature in me that went out from God's witness. Even the pride of life, which is not of the Father, but of the world. This indeed is the glory of the rich men, the great men, the chief captains, whose flesh is to be given to the fowls of the air and the supper of the great God. So, through the strong temptations and allurements of the flattering harlot, that spirit which goes out from the light, of whose cup all nations and kings of the earth have drunk, the honest, tender seed of equity, love, and meekness was even covered, lost, and was as dead in me. And the spirit of the world I let in again like a flood, whose foundation had in some measure previously been shaken, and the earth that lay upon the precious seed partially removed by the power of God. And gross darkness again covered my soul, and veiled its life and peace from it, which it formerly had felt and breathed after. So I can set my seal to the scripture. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and harmful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. 1 Timothy 6 9. 
Yet, in the time I was in France, I was kept enough in the fear of God by his pure witness, the light of Christ in my conscience, which showed me sin and evil, that I dared not be lewd or drunk, or act in such wickedness as the tempter would have led me to, still not knowing that it was the light of Christ which I then obeyed, which saved me from what the devil would have drawn me into. So now I can say with Jacob, The Lord was in this place, and I knew it not. Therefore all people come to him that tells you all that ever you did. For if you knew the gift of God and loved him, you would ask him for the water of life. But the rebellious will dwell in a dry land. Psalm 68, 6. But though I was preserved out of many outward evils, yet the love of this world and the things of the world had a stronghold in my heart, whereby the true love to equity, righteousness, and mercy had vanished away, and I knew not where to find the place of wisdom, though I sought for it carefully when I felt the loss of it. But it is in the cross to the will of man and of the flesh that that is born which inherits God's kingdom of peace. For after a while, when I was in the midst of my vain thoughts and imaginations, considering how to build great things in the earth, to become rich, knowledgeable, and honorable therein, and to obtain the friendship of the world and the praise of men, a sudden stop came upon me, like a cloud that covered all. I was struck with a still silence in my mind, like when Adam heard the voice of the Lord in the cool of the day, wherein I saw that I had been striving and wearying myself for mere vanity, for things that perish with the using, and that I, like a fool, might depart and leave them all in the midst of my days. So, as I gave heed to that which let me see these things to be but a shadow, and that it was folly to so eagerly pursue that which made itself wings to fly away, and thereby cheat myself of an eternal crown of rest to my immortal soul, then it was that my former condition came fresh into my remembrance, and I began to feel something stir in me for life, which had long lain in death and bondage under Pharaoh in spiritual Egypt. And as it were a cry ascended from the prisoner, groaning afar off for deliverance. And then I began to be troubled and condemned in myself, and my peace in the earth was broken, and the flaming sword turned every way upon it. Then, being afraid of shame, I strived with God's Spirit in me, not knowing what it was all this while, nor for some time after, and would cast off my trouble as much as I could. But sometimes I wished I could be meek, like others, for I often witnessed the truth of Solomon's words, In the midst of laughter the heart is made sad. Proverbs 14.13 And I found I was many times nearer to weeping than mirth in such company. So I had no rest for my soul in those days, being ignorant of my teacher, the true shepherd of Israel, who gives his sheep that follow him eternal life, which life is gentle and lowly in heart. But at that time my soul, being like one awakened from sleep and hungry after that which satisfies, began again to seek for true food and rest, and to enjoy that life and peace which changes not. Then I thought in my mind, what shall I do? Remembering that the priests, who had been made manifest by the same witness of God in my heart, were miserable comforters, physicians of no value, and such as plaster with untempered mortar, Ezekiel 13.10, and murdered the innocent and just seed in the hearts of poor ignorant people. Then, not knowing what to do to find life, Having gone forth hunting for food abroad, like Esau and all of his stock, I went among the people called Baptists to see if I could obtain rest and peace among them, thinking that if they were the people of God, I had a right to have fellowship with them and to partake of their promises and privileges. For I often felt something in me which was beloved of God, and so concluded that I was one of the elect, not then knowing and discerning things that differ, and that it was a seed in man which may be by him oppressed and trod under foot, to which the promises and blessings are, and that the election is before the foundation of the world, but the whole world lies in wickedness. Read this, you who can, you who cry out that the election is of a particular people, and the rest are left to themselves, and beware of the doctrine of devils, 
And remember that God is no respecter of persons, and Christ, the true light, enlightens every man that comes into the world, in whom is the election and the redemption, and that it is he that knows not Christ within him who is the reprobate, as the scripture says, 2 Corinthians 13.5. So then I became a constant follower of the Baptists, and at length was in that fellowship and brotherhood with them, which natural, carnal, visible water was the ground of. For before I was dipped in water, they would not call me brother, but suddenly afterwards they did. Yet after I was dipped, I was the same every way as previously, in no way made better or more satisfied by the water than before. And when I came again unto God's witness in me, in the cool of the day, it let me see how my soul still lay in death, though my comprehending mind had found a kind of life and food in a profession of religion, in which I had no true peace when all was performed and done by which I had hoped to obtain it. Indeed, peace still fled from me, whenever I turned to the gift of God in my heart, which let me see my state and condition, even the light of Christ, though I knew not then what it was. But now I know that there is no peace to the wicked, and that the woe as unto those who are covered with the covering and not with the Spirit of God, Isaiah 30, verse 1, which reproves the world for sin. Nor should I have ever attained it in that way if I had walked therein for hundreds of years. For we came not truly unto Christ, but rather denied Him, whose flesh is the true bread that gives life to the world. Neither were we joined together in the unity of the faith of the Son of God, which faith is a mystery held in a pure conscience, 1 Timothy 3, 9, giving victory over the world, 1 John 5, 4, which springs up from the light with which Christ has enlightened us all to give people the knowledge of God, wherein is experienced the saints' true inheritance and fellowship. But we were building a tower in our own imaginations, hoping the top would reach unto heaven, like the confounded builders of old, and like Nimrod's stock, who hunted before the Lord, the beginning of whose kingdom was Babel, which is that spirit that confuses all who build without Christ's light, the cornerstone and sure foundation. For though you may say, Lord, Lord, yet this avails nothing while you remain workers of iniquity. And so we were professing and talking of the truth which makes free, Christ, the light, the way to the Father, but... We remained in bondage, darkness, and falsehood, in the broad way wherein many hypocrites, deceitful workers, envious, proud, and covetous may walk. For these may keep on their covering of religious profession, and talk of him who leads to life out of death, but yet they suppress the truth in unrighteousness, Romans 1.18, keeping down his witness, the light that enlightens every man which lets you see when you have not the true bread of life, which gives peace, rest, and satisfaction to the soul, but rather feed upon the husks. And notwithstanding the great noise you make concerning him who is the substance of all, who ends the shadows, yet you expect his kingdom and glory and reign outwardly. Oh, foolish and blind, is not the kingdom of God within you? And is not the king's daughter all glorious within? Psalm 45, 13. And did not the king say, Go not forth, and when they shall say, Lo here and lo there, believe them not? But in this state I was once with you, until the Son of God opened the eyes of him who was born blind, whom the Pharisees had cast out, as they have done to many in this age who tremble at the word of the Lord. And in his eternal light I then saw that a profession of religion without life would never bring peace to that part which had awakened in me, breathing after the pure, righteous power of the living God. For it is from this life and power that all men have erred and become estranged by transgression, which is the middle wall of separation, Ephesians 2.14, that must be broken down as salvation is wrought out with fear and trembling. But this the professors of religion deny, casting out those who tremble at the living and powerful word, which is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And so the time has indeed come when they will not endure sound doctrine. 2 Timothy 4.3 This is to all of you 
priests, Baptists, and people who have gone out from that light which enlightens every man, that lets you see your ungodly deeds and evil words. What more shall I say of you? Why, you skip over judgment, and so do not know the love of God. This is from the Lord God to you, as you shall witness on your deathbed. So, after a season, in this my desperate and longing condition, in which I desired that God would make a change or alteration among us, feeling that in all that we performed we were dead to the pure, simple life of God, for which my soul thirsted, it happened that I heard a book read concerning the sufferings of some of the people of God who were called Quakers in a dungeon at Susham. This name and these sufferings were strange to me at that time, yet at the hearing of it something in me did arise with much tenderness and pity towards this innocent suffering people, which drew tears from my eyes, believing that they suffered for conscience' sake. And the same thing in me even said at that time that God would one day avenge them of their bloody persecutors, which now has been performed by his mighty hand of power on some of them, even to the cutting of them off from the earth as briars and thorns for the fire. But still, all this time, I did not know what it was that let me see these things, and I knew not light from darkness, as is the state of thousands who now profess Christ in words, as I did, but know him not as a leader of his sheep out of the darkness into the fold of eternal life and peace. Then I heard of Jacob Bemin's books, and began to read much in them, and to gather something of them into my own comprehension and the imaginations of my brain. But this, and all else, gave me no peace and rest to my mortal soul, which still lay in death and bondage by reason of transgression and sin. But not long after this, a minister of the word of life, whose name few know, came and preached to my spirit in prison which rejoiced much at the sound of his words, to which I gave diligent heed, and was eternally convinced that it was the very truth that he declared, and that there is no other way to know God or to be saved, except as I walk in that light with which he has enlightened every man, which let me see all the evil words and ungodly deeds that ever I had committed." This light comes from Christ, the Savior, and leads all that follow it out of the evil that is in the world unto him who was before the world was and by whom it was made in glory with the Father. He is the substance of all the types, figures, shadows, and ordinances of which many things might be spoken, but Christ is the sum who redeems man by his blood, that is, by his life, out of the earth, into which man was driven in transgression, up again unto God, who was before transgression, and who is the beginning and the end. So as my heart and my mind were turned to the true light, many scriptures came fresh unto me, confirming the truth of which he spoke. And the power of the word in my heart, which is of God, from whom the light comes, began to stir and to work, and condemnation was administered upon all my former religious professions. A sword then came upon my earth, which had sat still in peace, and an open war was proclaimed against the beast, the harlot, and the false prophet, by the lamb that was slain, whose sword came out of his mouth. And the prisoner of hope rejoiced at the beginning of this day of vengeance, believing the year of redemption had come. Indeed, a great change had begun, which seemed strange to me, and was also quickly perceived by the Baptists, who were then my companions in profession, but not in tribulation. For I was made to weep and lament, seeing that all the religion in the world was but as a fading leaf when it lacked the pure life and power of God, which saves from sin and brings into unity with Him so that I could no longer be satisfied, nor live in a talk of God and Christ, when I did not enjoy the true rest, even the pure milk of the immortal word of life, which my soul had breathed after, even from a child, though I knew not what it was, nor where to find it. But in this my troubled condition, many Baptists followed me, day and night, to persuade me out of it, looking upon me to be deluded, 
some with prayers, some with flattery, and others with envious words strive to bring me back to them, telling me that I had fallen from grace, had come under the law, and so was making the blood of Christ of no effect. But I did not know then that the blood is the life, and that the life is the light of men. And though I was convinced in my conscience of the eternal truth, yet my understanding was confused, and the day of the Lord was like darkness, and not like light, to that part in me which had held the truth in unrighteousness, as all shall one day witness when their covering is torn off, and their insides are made manifest. Thus these, by their many words, drew my mind out from God's witness in me, and away from the law written in the heart, to which I should have kept and been faithful, even that sure word of prophecy, which let me see all that ever I had done. And so, to get ease, I turned my mind out from the truth, which is required in the inward parts, and gave heed to seducing spirits and words which darkened counsel, insomuch that I joined with them again, in more zeal than before, and encouraged others to follow their strong imaginations from the letter of Scripture, looking for an outward Savior, though the Scriptures say Christ within the hope of glory, and know you not that Christ is in you, except you be reprobates? Indeed, we looked for his coming outside of us, though he said, When they shall say, Lo here and lo there, do not believe them, and go not forth. And we looked for an outward kingdom and glory, though the king's daughter is said to be all glorious within. And the king said, The kingdom of God is within you. And we looked for his resurrection and life as only an outward event, whereas he said, I am the resurrection and the life, and I have come as a light into the world, who enlightens every man that comes into the world. These things we imagined, and we built each other up in such ideas though they were contrary to the scriptures and contrary to the saints who built up in that faith which is a mystery held in a pure conscience. And so we skipped over judgment, like the Pharisees and hypocrites of old who spoke but did not do, climbing up an easier way than by the door, which is Christ who condemns sin in the flesh, like a thief who tries to steal another man's covering." But after a season, these things weighed heavily upon me, and I found that these lies were harder to be judged out and destroyed than all the other wickedness and iniquity that I ever committed. For when, being unsatisfied, I came away from the Baptists again, I resolved with purpose of heart to wait upon the Lord, whatever became of all the world, its glory, profession, or enmity." For I found a word stirring powerfully in me, saying, Seek first the kingdom of God. And to it I gave heed, turning my mind again to that light which had reproved me for sin since my childhood. And then the power of God was manifested, and his dreadful judgments fell upon the harlot who had gone out from the life into a barren religious profession. And then plagues, famine, Earthquakes, thunders, war, and tremblings, sighing, mourning, weeping, fasting, and great astonishment came upon that ground in me which before had professed the scriptures. And all that ever I had acted or spoken outside of the light was judged, cursed, and condemned, whether eating or forbearing, or drinking or forbearing, lying down or rising up, sleeping or waking, going out or coming in, all was judged and condemned, until the meek one came to ride as king upon the colt of a donkey, and Zion was redeemed with judgment. This came to pass as obedience was yielded to the Lord's power, who, with his mighty and piercing sword, wounded Leviathan and slew the dragon that was in the sea, and the great harlot was plagued, the beast and the false prophet together, of whose cup of fornication all nations and kings of the earth have drunk, and who must drink freely, as I have done, of the cup of the wine of the fierceness of the wrath of the Lord God Almighty, or else they shall never know rest and peace in the land of the living. For I saw and felt how Cain, the first birth, the envious one, the murderer, is a vagabond from God, and Ishmael, the wild man, the mocker, is cast out, and Esau, 
the cunning hunter is rejected, and the profane person, and all who are of proud Haman's stock and Nabal's race, these must have their portion in the lake of torment. For when the mind of man went out from the subjection to the life that formed him, he went into the property and place of the beasts, fowls, and creeping things, and then the true life and former of all things began to work in man as a troubler, reprover, and condemner, showing how he had gone out from his right place and habitation in which he was created and placed. And thus, being troubled in himself, man strove against the light of life that troubled and secretly judged him, which life is God, and so grew into wrath, anger, and rebellion, even ready to lift up his hand against everything that crossed him, having no resting place in the upright life that formed him, but yielding his heart to go outward into the bestial properties. Here Ishmael is born, the fleshly birth, whose hand is against every man, Genesis 16.12. And here man in the transgression is afraid of God his Creator, and is driven outward into the earth like Adam. But I saw that it is not that God the Creator does willingly or purposely drive men out from himself into the outward, earthly, or bestial properties, but man departing from him, by doing that which is contrary to his pure motion and life, finds himself troubled for it, and feels the anger or enmity of his Creator for it, who is grieved and vexed with the disobedience of his creatures. And so, to get ease from this trouble, man runs more into the various thoughts and things which occasion more anger, more torment, and more trouble to his own soul like Saul, who sought music to quiet him when he had departed from the true spirit and life of his Creator. But man in the beginning, before all inventions, was brought forth in Adam in the upright life, where all was quiet and in subjection to God, who is rest, peace, and quietness to all that live in him. But going out from this into the bestial properties, man is defiled and polluted, and finds, as the scripture says, that there is no rest for the wicked. Here also Cain went out from the true life, and sacrificed from the outward properties of beasts, in which he was not accepted, and so he was troubled and judged by the inward life that formed him, in which life Abel presented his offering. Thus Cain fretted, and was enraged with his brother, and slew him, because Abel offered to God from the most inward principle or property in which he was formed, which was his proper habitation, and so he was accepted, and in this inward life he was well-pleasing to God his Creator. But Cain, having gone from the inward into the outward, offered what was outward in the earthly and bestial properties, which reached not to the inward, neither could be accepted of God. And having a sense of non-acceptance, it reproached him, judged and troubled him, so that his countenance fell, and he was angry with his brother. This is Cain's mark in all ages, namely, the outward birth in the fleshly and outward properties, persecuting the inward spiritual birth in God's property. Indeed, this began in Cain and Abel, as it is written, He that was born after the flesh, or the outward birth, persecuted him that was born after the spirit, or the inward life, which is of God. And even so it is now, as all who are born of Abel's property can see. Therefore, all you sons of Adam, consider in what nature you are born and live, and offer your sacrifices. For God is not mocked, you shall reap what you sow, and not otherwise. If you are in the outward birth, which is of the flesh, then you are not accepted by the most pure, invisible God but rather are judged, troubled, and condemned by him, because of which you are fretful, contrary, and angry against those who, in the inward spiritual birth, are more righteous than you. For you and your knowledge stand in the proud, stubborn, and willful properties of brute beasts, in which you speak evil of the most inward things, which you know not. Nor shall you ever know them in that state until you come to the most inward life that formed you which is deeper, higher, and more excellent than the bestial or outward life in which you offer your sacrifice to an unknown God, 
who does not accept it at your hands. For those who are of the fleshly birth draw near with their mouth and lips, but their hearts are far off. They draw near in the outward, but the most inward remains at a distance, and they remain separated from that wherein acceptance is found. So be not deceived, for Cain and Abel are rightly understood in the most inward ground, and nothing is hidden from the former of all things with whom we have to do. And here also Jacob and Esau are clearly known and made manifest, the one being the plain man dwelling in a tent, and the other a cunning hunter, a man of the field, as the scriptures bear witness. And God says, Jacob I have loved, and Esau I have hated. But how can this be, that he loved one and hates the other, while they are but children? It is for the same reason that he had respect to Abel and his offering, but not to Cain and his offering. It lies in the births or inward properties in which they are generated, ruled, and acted, not in their outward persons or names. For God is no respecter of persons or outward names. But Jacob speaks of the plain man who dwells in the tent, Genesis twenty five twenty seven. that is, in the most inward life, which is his proper habitation, in which the love and acceptance are found and manifested to the spiritual birth in all ages. But Esau, who was hated, was a cunning hunter, a man of the field. Notice, it was this nature or property which was hated, and not the person, which by itself is but earth. And here we find the man of the field, the mind wholly captivated in the wild, hunting, and straying nature, even in the outward properties where the blessing is not obtained. For truly, the blessing is the right of Jacob in the tent who indeed is before the cunning hunting came forth. Yes, and truly Jacob shall be blessed. He that reads, let him understand, for these two births are in existence at this day. And here also is the life of Enoch, Abraham, Isaac, Moses, and the prophets, Christ and the apostles known in the most inward motion, seed, or life that formed them, which life is not known to the children of the flesh or the outbirth, any more than he that is upon the surface of the waters knows what is in the depth or the bottom of the ocean. For the natural man, as it is written, knows nothing but what he knows naturally, as brute beasts, in which property he also corrupts himself. But the spiritual, inward, or plain man knows all things, abiding in his tent, and in the counsel of the former of all things. And it is written that Enoch walked with God, and was not, for God took him. Genesis 5.24 But Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. Genesis 10.9 The beginning of whose kingdom is Babel, or confusion, yet remains to this day among the mighty and cunning hunters who have always hunted after the most inward, precious, substantial life, which to them is still unknown. And this was manifested in Cain, Ishmael, Esau, Haman, Judas, Herod, and many more which might be named, and many high priests, rulers, and people who were of the flesh in the kingdom of pride, subtlety, envy, wrath, and persecution, which is of Babel, always hunting after the prey, that is, after the inward birth, which walks with God in the invisible life of acceptance. And in this life, Christ came, manifesting his origin or father to the world, but the outward or fleshly birth neither knew him nor received him, though the world and all things in it were made and formed by him and for him. Instead, they sought to persecute his precious life to death as soon as he was born, as we see in Herod the king, who knew not the life of the Son of God when it was made manifest, being in the outward properties of this world, to which the inward is a mystery. As it is written, Great is the mystery of God, which none of the rulers of this age knew, for had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. 1 Corinthians 2.8 For the knowledge and understanding... The kingdom and glory of these outward ones are only in the visible, earthly, sensual properties in which lies the enmity against the invisible inward righteous life of the innocent lamb, 
who fights not for his kingdom, worship, or sacrifice like Cain and his generation, but rather prays to his father that they might see what spirit, property, or birth they are in, that so they might turn inward in their minds towards his kingdom, which Christ tells them is within them and not outward, bidding them seek it in righteousness, and then all that is outward will be in subjection, and all good things will be added. Consider this now, all you children of the outward or fleshly birth, who live and act in the enmity and corrupt life of the bestial properties, estranged from the most inward, pure, eternal life of the former and creator of heaven and earth. With speed, turn your minds inward and be still, earnestly desiring that you may know God and be drawn back into that which can translate into his kingdom, which lies hidden in you, invisible and not outward. Yes, turn your minds to that which you are inwardly estranged from. For the ground of the false birth and false prophet is this, that man goes out from the inward life of uprightness and truth, and minds only outward visible things, in which he cunningly hunts for the satisfaction of the motions, lusts, and desires of the bestial life. But this life of Esau is judged and reproved in you by the most inward life, which life is of God, and is the foundation of Enoch, Abel, Abraham, and the rest of that generation. And if you come not to be built upon this foundation, by repentance from the works and nature of unrighteousness, then you will fall with Cain and Judas, Esau and Haman, and the rest of that generation, without hope of recovery, into the ever-sinking, bottomless pit of darkness and misery without end. For it is a fearful and dreadful thing to live and die in that nature, birth, and property, which God is never reconciled to, but rather abhors as an abomination forever. And your breath, your times and seasons are in his hand, and you cannot repent whenever you will, or in your own appointed time but only when the inward life of God stirs with its discoveries and reproofs of the evil ways, words, and actions which are brought forth by you. This is the only time when he calls to turn at his reproofs. For thus says God the Creator, My spirit shall not always strive with man, because he is flesh, Genesis 6.3, or because a fleshly birth of this world has entered the soul of man. Therefore, consider Esau, who was of this fleshly birth, and who could not find a place of repentance or a way of returning, being hardened in profaneness. Hebrews 12:17. For I tell you from a certain knowledge of the mysterious life of creation, that if you spend your time without the true knowledge of the only wise, invisible God, which comes only through experiencing his judgments come upon all veiling outbirths and all the degenerating properties of unrighteousness. And if you do not come through judgment to have unity with him in the most inward life of righteousness, you will be driven into the most utter darkness and blackness of woes and miseries forever. For it is not everyone that can say with their mouth, Lord, Lord, who will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that is born again, translated like Enoch, born of that birth of the Spirit which was in Abel, by which he offered a more excellent sacrifice than Cain unto his Maker. This birth alone, and not the other, is accepted of God, and walks with him from the time of Abel unto this day. Therefore, think not that the kingdom or mystery of godliness consists in outward things or visible observations, for I tell you, no, it is a deeper thing than the face of the earth, which even the hypocrites can discern. Dig now, you who can, and find this pearl of great price, which is able to translate or recreate the soul. For the day has dawned in which all things visible and invisible, shall be clearly known and manifested unto that birth which God accepts. Nor does the kingdom of righteousness consist in satisfying the flesh, the lusts of the eye or ear, or the pride of life, for these are not of the Father, 
but of the world or fleshly birth and of the kingdom of the bestial powers of darkness in which the righteous holy god and his kingdom are neither seen known understood or in any measure enjoyed so then be still and learn to know the everlasting gospel which is now preached in every creature under heaven saying fear god and give glory to him that made heaven and earth for the hour of his judgment is come revelation fourteen six for by this gospel cain the vagabond and his sacrifice are manifested and the hidden things of esau the cunning hunter who loses the blessing are brought to light and by it jacob obtains the inheritance and abel's sacrifice is accepted but the first birth of the flesh is rejected forevermore therefore all people upon the face of the earth consider what i say unto you now a measure of the true light of life has been given to you by the lord god of infinite mercy that you should not perish but that by it you should be led out of the fleshly birth and the world into eternal life and peace yes a manifestation of the spirit of god is given to every one of you with which to profit first corinthians twelve seven therefore as you must give an account in the great and dreadful day of god take heed that you turn not from his grace to live in unrestraint in vanity and wickedness for there you will always be complaining for lack of grace or for lack of power to change and so you will charge god foolishly for none are murmurers or complainers but such as walk after their own ungodly lusts but the grace of god that brings salvation has appeared unto all men and it teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lusts and to live soberly righteously and godly in this present world titus two eleven and twelve this is the light that comes from the only begotten son of god who said i am the light of the world and all who follow him know that all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light for whatever makes manifest is light ephesians three yes the true light of the son of god jesus christ who enlightens every man that comes into the world is that which manifests or shows secretly unto you your evil deeds your unholy conduct your lightness and vanity of mind and also lets you see the hidden stirrings of pride and envy in your hearts and checks and reproves you many times secretly for your unsavory words and harsh speeches and vain and wicked thoughts whereby a secret fire in you is kindled that causes you sometimes to blush for there is an eye that sees in secret which one day you will know by whose light every man shall be rewarded openly when god judges the secrets of all mankind by christ jesus the light of the world therefore let none think within themselves that they shall be covered or hidden by merely talking of his words or professing his name or that they will be saved by forgiveness of sins without departing from iniquity for i say woe from the lord god unto all who make anything their hope covering or hiding place but the light life and pure spirit of the living god whose glory enlightens the world and his brightness makes hidden things manifest thus the hope of the hypocrite shall perish and the wicked will not stand in the judgment and all unrighteous coverings will be too narrow in his dreadful presence who comes to judge the world in righteousness and the people with truth but his light he does shine in the conscience and hearts of men bearing witness against all unrighteousness that is by them committed reproving and condemning the unrighteous grounds from which it arises and striving with them to lead and guide them in the way of holiness unto christ the saviour from which it comes without which no man will see the lord therefore all people upon the earth turn your minds to the light wherewith you are enlightened by christ jesus the saviour which lets you see sin and evil repent and prize your time 
and stop not your ear nor close your eye against that seed in you which arises for your deliverance and is sad in the midst of your vain merriment and which cannot be satisfied with anything of this world rather heed that which shows you the evil of the world for it will lead you out of it out of all of its ways worships fashions and traditions which are vain and fading up to christ who is not of the world who is the salvation of all who obey him and this is he who has led me out of the world through great tribulations unto the good land of rest glory to him that sits upon the throne and unto the lamb for ever and ever whose power once killed but now makes alive and having slain the enmity by the blood of his cross his own arm has brought salvation this is given forth in true love to the yet scattered of the flock whom my soul desires may come to know the rest at noon in the life of the son of righteousness by william bailey here ends this selection from the writings of william bailey after being convinced of the everlasting gospel as is above related and sitting for some time under heavy judgment and deep instruction in the school of christ william bailey went on to become an eminent minister in the early society of friends he is said by those who knew him best to have been a man of an innocent and blameless life whose conduct adorned the gospel in every sense and whose words administered grace to the hearers like apollos he was an eloquent man mighty in the scriptures being well acquainted with both the history and the mystery of the oracles of god through the assistance of that spirit which gave him a true understanding of both fellow minister john crook once wrote of him if it is lawful for paul that great apostle without boasting to give an account of his own sufferings and perils by sea and by land from both open enemies and professed friends etc surely without offence i may relate something of the great sufferings of this good man that it may be seen how it was not only given to him to believe and to preach the word of faith but also to suffer for the same by cruel persecutors he has been thrown down and dragged upon the ground by the hair of his head and his mouth and jaws being endeavored to be rent and broken apart so that the ground whereon he lay was covered with blood and as if this butchering of him had not been enough to make him a fit sacrifice for their cruelty a heavy-bodied persecutor then stamped upon his breast with his feet endeavoring to beat the breath out of his body and when this persecutor had done his pleasure he commanded the jailer to take him away and put him in a nasty hole for his entertainment and cure but william bailey suffered both abuse and imprisonment with great patience and constancy and having at last laid down his body in the service of his lord his wife wrote of him as follows i am fully assured she says he departed this life a clean innocent man and one who desired the good of all mankind and sought not himself but the honor of god he coveted no man's gold or silver but did spend and was spent for the honor of god his memorial shall live though his body is removed 